What's up, everyone? Welcome to the Friday, August 4th edition of the MLB Sims video. I'm your host, Adam Scherer. You can follow me on Twitter at ShipMyMoneyDFS. We have an 11-game MLB slate tonight. It's a pretty interesting one where we have a couple of clear-cut top pitchers, but for the most part, there are good pitchers on the slate. There are They are also generally in tough matchups, whether that be because of the ballpark, because of the opponent, or both. Um, there's some good-looking stacks, but nothing that really runs away with it. So we have a pretty wide-open tournament slate, and we're going to simulate it out on DraftKings and take a look at what's showing up right now early on in the day. As always, if you're looking to use this tool for yourself, you can ch uh, check the link below this video, whether you're watching on YouTube or Twitter. Sign up there. We have monthly and weekly uh, pricing options. It also supports DraftKings and FanDuel, even though this video is just talking DraftKings. And also, you know, as a reminder, um, things are going to change throughout the day. We're going to get lineups. Ownership's going to change. So uh, don't treat anything in this video as gospel, but it is giving you a look at how we are simulating things early in the day and what is looking like some of the best, most profitable approaches you can take to this slate. So to start, I created 2,000 lineups in Fantasy Cruncher. I set it so that the individual player exposures would be similar to how we have the field projected uh, as of right now. So we get a pretty good idea or pretty similar lineups to what the field is likely to play. I chose 25% to first place because tonight's big tournament on DraftKings is 25% to first place. Uh, you also now can add up to or simulate up to 10,000 lineups. I still only did 2,000 for the sake of time for this video, but you can do more if you're using this tool. And now we're going to dive into it, looking at some of the top lineups. And here at the top, we have a five-man Colorado stack, two-man Boston stack. Colorado is not a great offense, but they are in a pretty good spot tonight. They are taking on Adam Wainwright, who obviously has been extremely bad this year. So we're getting the five-man Rockies with Montero, Brendan Rodgers, who's very inexpensive, Ryan McMahon, who is the best hitter on the Rockies and a good play, whether it's part of a Colorado stack or not. Tovar is a reasonably priced shortstop, and Nolan Jones, another good left-handed bat, or at least a left-handed bat that has some power. We are getting a two-man Red Sox stack with Connor Wong, a cheap catcher option, and Jaron Duran, and then the Shohei Otani one-off facing a popular Luis Castillo. Uh, as far as pitching goes, we're getting to Reed Detmers and Aaron Nola, two of the top pitching options on the slate. Nola is taking on the Royals tonight in Philadelphia. Detmers taking on the Mariners in uh, in Los Angeles, in Anaheim. So um, they are likely to be the two highest owned pitchers. Detmers coming in at 8,200 with the highest strikeout percentage on the slate. Nola coming in slightly below Castillo at 10K. Next, we have a five-man Cleveland stack, two-man Yankees. Once again, getting to Nola, and we have Luis Severino, who has a really tough matchup with the Astros. He's also been very bad. No other real word for it this season, but he is cheap and in a lineup here or there at low ownership makes some sense as long as you're getting the bats you want. Looking at the Cleveland stack, we have Bo Naylor, who's a cheap catcher that has some power upside. Josh Naylor, who actually is not going to be in the lineup tonight. He was just added to the injured list. As I started to record this, Jimenez, Ramirez, and Stephen Kwan. So um, the Guardians are in a decent spot tonight but they don't look as good once you lose Josh Naylor. So do keep that in mind. That's obviously something that is going to change between now and the lineups that we end up playing closer to lock. But Jimenez and Ramirez in particular still are going to be strong pieces that can drive a Cleveland stack. They have a good matchup tonight against Mike Clevenger. And then we have the two man with Anthony Volpe and Aaron Judge. Not a great spot against Hunter Brown, but it is a good park for power. So getting to those two makes some sense. And then we have the right-handed power bat in Teoscar Hernandez, giving us some leverage against the popular lefty Reed Detmers. Uh, then we get another Colorado stack. Here we have a five-man Mets, two-man Seattle stack, Aaron Nola and David Peterson. Peterson's not likely to go very deep into this game, so don't really love that play, but he's not getting much ownership, and he is a good pitcher. Um, as far as the Mets stack goes, though, I do think it's an interesting stack. They're not getting a lot of ownership. They have one of the lower implied run totals on the slate, but they are in a park that plays up left-handed power against a pitcher in Dean Kramer that has struggled with it this season. Francisco Alvarez is right-handed, but a very high upside catcher option. Pete Alonso also right-handed, but one of the higher upside first basemen on any slate that he's on. Brandon Nimmo and Francisco Lindor, two left-handed bats that can do damage in Camden Yards. And then Starley Marte, just a reasonably priced outfielder to round out the stack. As far as the two-man goes, we're getting to Suarez and Dylan Moore, two hitters from the right side against Detmers. Again, Detmers doesn't really struggle with power, but it is a good hitter's park. And we have a Jaron Duran one-off. Uh, you can look a little bit further down. You're getting to Toronto, five-man Boston, five-man Yankees. So uh, pretty diverse mix of stacks here. And that's not surprising given that uh, there's no one team really running away with everything right now. The Red Sox are first in top stack percentage at 10%. So it's a slate where I'd expect to be pretty spread out. Now we can look at 
exposures for stacks and players by selecting our top 150 lineups, going over to exposures and sorting by five-man stack exposure. Toronto coming in at the top at 16%. They do have a tough matchup tonight against James Paxton, about a 5 to 6% chance of being the top stack. But they do get a park upgrade in Fenway Park. Great park for run scoring. You get the green monster in left field. So, you know, close to home plate, a lot of doubles and home runs there. And Toronto does have a lot of power. So while it is a scary matchup, they are in a good hitting spot, hitting environment, and they're not getting a ton of ownership. Boston coming in second. I just mentioned they were the highest top stack percentage on the slate at around 10%. We're getting around 13 as they take on Alec Manoa. Again, Fenway Park, great for scoring, and Manoa has not been very good this year. His strikeout numbers have gone up in his four starts since returning from his demotion to the minor leagues, but he's still walking too many hitters. He's still been ineffective overall, and the Red Sox are a very tough matchup for him. Then we get to the Pirates, 11%. Uh, five-man stack exposure, taking on Colin Ray in Milwaukee. So a nice park upgrade for them. They are very reasonably priced as well, so you can build good lineups around them. Philadelphia has a very good matchup against Jordan Lyles in Philly. Lyles has benefited each of the last two years from pitching in Baltimore and pitching in Kansas City. You get him here in a favorable hitter's park. He hasn't been very good even considering he does pitch in it in a favorable pitcher's park for his home games. Going into Philly here, doesn't miss a lot of bats. Kyle Schwarber in particular stands out as a really good play at 4,600. Getting to Seattle, again, just a cheap offense, a lot of power. Very difficult matchup against Detmers, but when things go well for Seattle, you're knocking off about 30% of the field, and you're getting a low-owned stack along with it. So they are a pretty powerful five-man stack. Individually, Reed Detmers coming in at the top, 47% exposure, 25% projected ownership. No problems with that. Just mentioned the upside for the Seattle stacks, but Detmers is only 8,200 with the highest strikeout percentage on the slate, and he has been able to limit right-handed power so far this season. In addition to striking righties out about 32% of the time, Aaron Nola also getting slightly above the field at 47%. No issues with that either. Pretty clearly the top pitching option as he takes on the Royals. Then you start getting in the bats. Jaron Duran at the top, 22% getting to Guerrero, Devers, Schwarber, some really good bats here. Severino showing up 18% of the time. Don't love that one. Hope it goes away. Uh, he's projected for 1% ownership, so you can use him as a way to be different. It's just that he hasn't been very good, and there's no reason to trust him here against Houston. Uh, Aaron Judge, relatively low-owned. Tough matchup against Hunter Brown, but just has a ton of power. Jack Sawinski is one of my preferred value options as he takes on Colin Ray. Uh Expected ISO north of 300 for Swinsky this year. Ray strikes out less than 20% of right of left-handed hitters. He's allowed a 200 expected ISO. So Swinsky looks really good. We can look at where we're getting the most over or under the field. Detmer's coming in at the top. No problem with that one. Then Severino, again, would prefer that not be happening, but he is cheap at least. Guerrero, the young, so two Toronto bats. David Peterson, you know, I mentioned that earlier. I think that's going to go away as our projection changes. Um, Shoei Otani, 3% ownership. Getting to 13%. No problems with that. Luis Castillo has struggled with left-handed power this year. On the opposite end, 10% um, below the field on Castillo, getting to nine. He's projected for 19. This isn't a stand that I think is hard and fast. Like it's perfectly reasonable to, to just play more Aaronola and play less Castillo. It's also reasonable if you're playing more popular stacks to maybe play a little bit less Nola and more Castillo since he's getting about half the ownership. But right now, uh, I'm getting below the field on Castillo, getting below the field on Ray. Uh, he's the most popular of the value pitchers today, pulling about 11 to 12%. So that's where you're seeing some of like that Luis Severino come from, the Peterson come from. It, um, again, I would prefer getting to Colin Ray once we get the lock, but right now I'm not getting to as much of him. So those are the two, I think, pitchers that really stand out. And that's all I have for you for tonight. Uh, good luck on your lineups. Thanks for checking out the video. Hope you enjoyed it. And enjoy your weekend.